So hello everyone. Uh, I'm Siddharth Bhatia. I am a final year PhD student at National University of Singapore. And this work uh, is called Memstream. It is memory-based uh, streaming anomaly detection. So this is the uh, URL of the repository. It is the code is publicly available. And uh, my PhD is kind of mostly focused on streaming or real-time anomaly detection, and uh, in the broader terms, real-time machine learning where we want to you know, detect um, either frauds or anomalies or intrusions in a real-time manner so that uh, the effect uh, and the compromise is kind of minimized. So uh, in like, if it's like too long, then read kind of summary. So for memstream, it's actually a memory augmented feature extractor, which allows us uh, quick retraining. It gives us a theoretical bound on the memory size for effective drift handling. And it is robust to memory poisoning. So it's outperformed uh, all of the state of the art streaming anomaly detection baselines. So I'll go step by step. So, what is the problem exactly? We have uh, this as a, you know, a temporal data where uh, over time you have some kind of a stream, streaming data which is arriving over time. And you observe that there is some kind of a shift and a trend shift at time equal to six. So we observe that you know there's a sudden kind of like a trend which is shifting and we want to detect this kind of a drift in the data and we want to detect it in a real time uh, scenario which is quite useful for anomaly detection and another kind of intrusions. So uh, what we did with Memstream was that we proposed a no novel streaming approach using a denoising autoencoder uh, and a memory module. So just having like both of these techniques were uh, available in the literature or autoencoders have been used quite a lot for uh, anomaly detection. But at the same time, the problem with autoencoders is that uh, they've generalized the data too much. So when autoencoders have been used in anomaly detection, the limitation has been that they usually generalize the data. So we uh, incorporated a memory module along with that to detect anomalies. This way, it was resilient to concept drift and it also allowed us retraining of the data. So there was this recent uh, Turing Award lecture by uh, Jeffrey Indian, and he was focusing on how you can you know, focus on retraining rather than just training at once. So what happens is if you train your data once, your data after a while, it's uh, like it's not really useful if a drift has happened in the data. So Memstream allows quick retraining. In our model, we also uh, give theoretical guarantees so we have two propositions. Uh, in the first one, we discuss the optimum memory size which is required for effectively handling the concept drift. In the second proposition, uh, we discuss the motivation behind our architecture design. So our architecture is kind of uh, you know pretty uh, different from the uh, conventional design of an autoencoder, where the number of features is slightly lesser uh, than uh, you know your dimensions is lesser than your uh, original encoding after the encoding, but in our design, we've actually increased the number of dimensions. So we discussed that motivation in our second proposition, and that is how it becomes like really interesting. So the uh, third contribution is that we are robust to memory poisoning, so we can prevent anomalies from entering. And if at all they enter the memory, we are uh, able to self-correct it and recover from bad memory states. So this is very useful because usually what happens in uh, you know some kind of anomaly detection systems or intrusion detection systems, one particular bad uh, malicious actor can enter and uh, you know it's very harmful. But we're able to self-correct after that and recover from the bad memory states and effectiveness. So our experimental results across uh, synthetic as well as real-world data sets demonstrates that Memstream is outperforming like a lot of baselines in this particular area. So Reproducibility, our code and data sets are all available on this repository. So this is how the model looks. So uh, it's basically like you can see this as a partition in between. So it's uh, divided into two parts. So after like there is the streaming data, which is uh, coming in as a like over the time and you have an encoder here. So after an initial training of the feature extractor, like this feature extractor, we train it on a very small subset of your normal, which is non-anomalous, non-malicious data. After we've trained it on a very small subset, it can be say 1%, 0.1%, depends on uh, like how much data you have. And then Memstream processes 
like each record in two steps it output outputs a normally score for each record this is one particular record and it like it is kind of outputting a normally score for each record by querying the memory so this is the memory module it's querying the memory for k nearest neighbors for the record encoding and it calculates a discounted score so this discounted discounted distance is actually our normally score which happens using by querying the memory in a k nearest neighbor fashion and once we've got that score so if the score is within an update threshold so we're not updating the memory for all anomaly scores if it is like within an update threshold uh, we'll update the memory and that update is done in a fifo manner so this is actually the final uh, memory model and in the paper we actually considered different ablations what if the memory is for example say not a fifo memory it's uh, like a least recently used memory what if like uh, we just don't do lesser than an update threshold what if we uh, go more than the threshold and different kind of discount factors for uh, and then maybe what is the dis different k factors so we kind of discuss each of these factors in the paper how do we you know arrive at this final model where uh, we found that fifo was performing the best and uh, so all this was done experimentally and uh, empirically it was evaluated so uh, in the experiments we actually compared to like we answered these four questions how accurate uh is like memstream detecting the anomalies as compared to all the previous streaming baseline methods and how fast it can detect concept drift so our focus was also whether it can do it in a fast manner or not and whether we can retrain it uh and what ha happens when you actually retrain it so usually your models once they're performing you don't have an option to retrain it but we give that uh like opportunity here and if at all there is some kind of memory poisoning how do we recover from it can we uh, do a self correction mechanism or not so i'll discuss these experiments i have left out the theory and the you know the uh, somewhat difficult proofs uh, for like some offline discussion but uh, discussing the experiment so these are all streaming based lines uh, we left out all the you know offline approaches and uh, these are all like popular baselines uh, in the last 7 8 years these are the famous ones so kirsion dial of extreme uh, that was a kdd paper m stream was uh, like like a streaming baseline from last year it was quite popular sorry and extended isolation forest from tkd 2021 so we observed like uh, that so i'll discuss the data sets in brief so these iron to cover these are all uh, you know popular repository data sets are slightly smaller in size these were kdd 99 it's like a kdd cup 99 data set nsl is an improved version of kdd 99 unsw dos these are all intrusion detection data sets so there's a survey paper which actually uh, like we've referenced it in the in our uh, www paper it actually says that uh, like these are the data sets which you should definitely show your results so that it kind of has a survey of over 50 data sets to show why including these four data sets kind of covers your entire breadth of data sets and it can uh, like it's kind of you know a uh, sufficiently complete set okay yeah so uh, and the synthetic data set is our own introduced data set we kind of create this data set uh, based on the baseline so we found some limitations in the baselines and we uh, wanted to you know create an adversarial data set to see whether we can outperform those or not so this data set is also publicly available on github right now it's just used like uh, with a python script but it's you know it has a lot of difficult uh, detections and we see that uh, in uh, almost all the data sets we are outperforming the baselines there are a couple of data sets where uh, extreme and mstream outperformers and uh, like that's not by a huge margin but at the same time uh, they're good but we you know outperform them in the speed as well as uh, some of these data sets are too small for our algorithm to you know outperform them because we require some kind of learning as well so that is where uh, we slightly uh, like not as like we cannot outperform them in those uh, the smaller data sets they're just a couple of thousand records each so that was auc area under the curve 
for an RFC curve. This is the AUC uh, precision recall curve and the time required. So on the NSL data sets, and we see that like the precision recall curve like also be uh, pretty good, and that we do in a time efficient manner. So we are able to achieve this particular AUC, which is like outperforming all the data sets, and uh, we're like quite improved in it. And it's not like that it's quite slow. It's just compared to M stream. So M stream is currently the fastest baseline, and in, like there's no way. We can actually compare with MSIM because MSIM is a statistical approach. We are using machine learning and like auto encoders will definitely take them some time to do machine learning. Apart from that, we're much better than all the other baselines. So concept drift. Uh, this is our synthetic data where uh, this this is not the exact data set which I mentioned earlier, but this is also another synthetic data with a lot of different types of concept drift. So there's this drift happening here. There's like a sudden mean increase here and like. Another point here, and we observe that uh, like Memstream is able to catch all these different kind of drifts, and you know different. Uh, whenever there's a difference, it kind of gives out a higher harmony score. So uh, one particular limitation of our work is that we're not telling you that this is an anomaly, this is not an anomaly. What we do is we give out an anomaly score, and then based on that, the domain expert can you know decide okay what we want to do with that anomaly score, whether we want to block that traffic or we want to give it a warning okay uh, above then this threshold we'll you know uh, kind of scrutinizingly uh, observe it in the future but we don't really uh, you know just do a binary kind of decision zero or one this is an anomaly block it or something like that we give out an anomaly score and we observe that this is like much more useful and it can add like a uh, benefit of you know having a human assisted analyst kind of improve upon it uh, so then uh, this is the retraining. So we observed that as we increase the number of times we retrained the model, it actually improved the accuracy. This was kind of expected. But the more interesting part is uh, this is the accuracy. So the AUC curve. So that's, that is kind of constantly improving the number of times we retrain it. Uh, also, two interesting things. One, after a certain point of time, you don't really need to retrain it. You're just, you know, uh, not kind of, Effectively, uh, you know, uh, this is so. This is the uh, accuracy, and so after a particular point of time, you're not really improving the accuracy by a significant margin. At the same time, we observed another interesting thing that the time is actually not too much. So it's within the same particular amount of time. It's not that it's uh, significantly higher because we're training on a very small subset of samples. So this actually amount is, you know, insignificant compared to what all, what all other things are happening. So we're just taking say 0.5% of your data or 1% of your uh, normal data and retraining our model with that. It's just that it's done after a significant amount of time. So that's not really relevant. And it can capture, you know, your recent concept drift. And after that, your memory can kind of, in a streaming fashion, uh, capture your whatever drift is happening. Self-correction, so we also observed, so uh, for different values of gamma, so I haven't actually discussed what gamma and beta are, but in very intuitive terms, if your gamma is zero, so uh, when gamma is zero, it's not actually, we're uh, removing the facility to you know self-correct it. And at that particular point of time, we observed that high beta is kind of you know vulnerable and it doesn't perform as well. But when you have an op option to self-correct it, it's kind of, decently uh, good with even very like high beta and that's kind of uh, like demonstrating that the uh, algorithm can kind of uh, do self correction with uh, independent of your uh, beta so that is there and uh, obviously if you have an appropriate beta threshold which is chosen that is uh, it is independent of your the performance this is like uh, from up to one, and this is independent of your gamma value. So that is there. This is an ablation study for different components. We discussed memory updates. So how can you, you know, uh, update your memory in a FIFO manner, round robin, least recent news, or if you do not uh, really uh, like update it at, at each instant. So then this is the difference in the performances. We have like uh, a feature extraction ablation where Instead of an autoencoder, we use replace it with an information bottleneck module or a PCM module. 
and we observed that like our auto encoder kind of performs the best which is expected with like recent deep learning advances uh, and like we used a denoising auto encoder we mentioned that in the paper like it's a state of the art auto encoder right now so memory length uh, we observe one interesting thing for memory length if your memory length is too small like or if it's too big uh, it does not perform optimum that is because in one of the cases it actually start, like store everything in the memory in another case uh, it will you know kind of uh, not be able to represent the exact normal data or your anomalous data so we are kind of working this out like in a future work where we can detect this in a like in an unsupervised uh, automated way because right now this is kind of you know uh, we're just uh, adjusting it for a particular data set so that's not really optimal but apart from that's output dimension we discuss in the paper how uh, our dimensions greater than d like d should be greater than d this is the unconventional design it actually performs better and we give out a theoretical proof for that a usual conventional auto encoder we have to reduce the dimensions but we show that as we increase the dimensions we uh, performing much better and an update threshold so i just skip these uh, like we can discuss it offline if you're interested about update threshold and kn coefficients uh, the ablation study for that so yeah any questions 